We're just concerned uh, what your take is on INEX saying that the electronic collation of results was not a mandatory requirement. Um, very simple. I want to say that the body called INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission, was created by the Nigerian Constitution and given authority and powers to carry out electoral functions in Nigeria. And so it derives its authority from the Constitution. Section 153, subsection 2 of the Constitution created this body. Now, Section 160 of this same Constitution gives INEC the power to make its own internal regulations to regulate its activities, the processes of election, and every other thing. Now, taking advantage of that section, INEC enacted its own regulation, which is the regulation that was used for this election. And then the regulation in Section 38 introduced electronic collation or transmission of results into the system. And after that introduction, because that is that is the discretion that Section 160 gave to of the Constitution gave to INEC to create its own regulation, that the discretion and to use that to create its own way of managing or carrying out election, electoral uh, activities. That discretion was done by the enactment of this regulation. And this regulation introduced electronic transmission. So there's no more discretion for INEC. Once it says in section 38 of the electoral, I mean, uh, regulation that ele election results will be transmitted from the polling unit by the electoral officers, then it means that there is no more, no longer discretion for INEC to say that they are going to use both manual uh, 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 transmission and electronic transmission, the manual collection and electronic uh, uh, transmission. That is, that would have been possible if that regulation was not enacted. And then INEC went out of its way to in inform Nigerians that it is going to transmit the results live, real time, from polling units. It gave Nigerians that confidence. And that was why many Nigerians drew out to the street to carry out their civic responsibility. So I do not believe, I do not want to uh, 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 align with the position that INEC has a discretion to now decide on the day of the election to transmit some results and then collate some results manually. So my thinking is that this is an afterthought. This is wrong from inception. INEC has no discretion to transmit results electronically. I mean, it, it has no discretion to uh, uh, collect results outside the transmission by electronic means that it itself introduced into the regulation. Okay, uh, what happens by law if uh, due process is jettisoned? In this case, the due process will be the electronic transmission of results of this election. What happens by law if anybody, any party, any, any, any organization jettisons what is supposed to be done as provided for by law? It's, it's very simple. It's a cancellation of that result. It is a cancellation of the result that was not transmitted, that was not done based on the laid down procedure and, uh, and law of the, uh, of the state. So if that was not done by INEC, the, result, the resulting effect is that that election will be cancelled. That is a position of the law. And uh, if somebody says that election was not, I mean, the, the, the electoral body did not comply with the a, a, a electronic transmission of the result. And by reason of that, that election was marred with irregularity. What that person is actually going to ask the tribunal to do is to cancel that election. And the tribunal cannot now say, since this election was not transmitted uh, electronically as was supposed to be done, and by reason of that, irregularities were inferred, and so the election was not won by this person that was won by this other person. No, 
it would be cancelled. That is the position of the law, sir. So if it is proven beyond reasonable doubt that what was supposed to be done was not done, this election, there's a possibility it could be cancelled? That is the position of the law. It must be cancelled. Okay, uh, just a, a little digression before we let you go. Some people have, uh, have called for the speedy um, treatment of all the, the matters before the court, the election tribunals, before the day of inauguration. Do you think this is a possibility? It is possible. It's quite possible. And I, 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 be, I, I want to believe that there's nothing that the tribunal will want to do that they cannot do now. Because the best method, the best way to get these issues sorted out without any violence, without any problem on the inauguration day is to ensure that this election uh, uh, tribunal decides the case before the day of uh, inauguration. If this is done, it will be very easy for somebody to know, to say, well, the, this is what the court has said, and then the, the inauguration will go on. If the court now decides to notify or cancel that result, I mean, that election, that means that another election will have to be held. But there are going to be issues uh, consider issues, but then that can always be handled. The court has the wisdom to know the pronunciation to, I mean, the pronouncement to make in the circumstances to take care of the value because there must be no vacuum in government. Is the date May 29th sacrosanct by law that it well, cannot be changed? Date, yeah, very well. That date is sacrosanct by law because if that date is not kept, it means that something else, unless, unless, unless there is an intervention of uh, natural, natural element that will cause it not to be possible to for that inauguration to uh, be held, or the election is cancelled, as in this case. If this is done, then the the tribunal will now give a direction on what else to be done in the circumstance. Okay, but if, what if it gets to May 29th and maybe something happens, like you've said, or the elections is cancelled and there is no provision in the constitution for an interim government and the, the tenure of the present administration will end on May 29th, what happens now to Nigeria? How will it be administered then, beyond then? Then quickly, the, the, the theory of uh, necessity will come in because... Where the law has not made provision for a particular issue and certain things because it was not in this in the search in the first place and certain things happen, then the doctrine of necessity comes in. The issue of interim government can be by way of necessity. Let it come to stay to take care of the vacuum. I mean, the, 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 the uh, situation between the time that election is going to be conducted properly, another body that will be condu I mean, conduct the election and all that is set up and everything will be done according to the books, according to the law. That uh, 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 interim government can become legal by reason of the doctrine of necessity. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Omonan, for uh, giving us perspective. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.